Hey guys, myself Rakesh and in this video we are going to learn API in UiPath, right? This is specifically designed for the beginners to understand what is an API. If you do not have any knowledge, then this is the video which is going to help you. So let's get started. First of all, when it comes to API, I think all, all of us do have the meaning of this API, right? Application Programming Interface. But exactly what is API? Where exactly this API is used? right where do you find it you know do you know where exactly this api exists and where do you find it and you will also have question how do i really use this api what is this all about right these are the basic questions for the first time when you hear api all these questions will come to your mind but not to worry if you continue till the end of the video you will get answer to all of these questions so let's get started now if i ask you api actually you are using api on everyday basis you are using api unknowingly for example when you type something on google let's say you are opening a web page let's say facebook you are opening the moment you are opening a page on internet you are actually using api when you are sending an email when you are receiving an email when you are opening any application on your phone on your laptop right so every day knowingly or unknowingly you are using apis so what are these apis first of all so let's understand so API is generally used to transfer data. This is a mechanism to for the data exchange to transfer data from one system to the other system. Okay. So let's get an example. For example, I'm on my laptop, right? And I'm going to type www.facebook.com. So you'll open a browser and on the browser, you'll be typing a URL, right? So the moment you type the URL, what happens? this because you have typed this url it's going to connect with the server and from the server it's going to receive the response so what is happening there are two different things happens when i call api api is the overall function of sending a request and receiving a response so this entire thing is the is where the api in the back end works you do not see it in the front end but in the back end there's an api which is doing this job the moment user is typing a url a request has been sent to the server and from the server a response is received to your laptop for example if i open type facebook the face it will go to the facebook server using this url and from from there it will come back and it, it is going to show you the page of the url that could go with any website you can take any website that comes to your mind any of the website that you are accessing on the internet you know all these things works through the api where the request is being sent from the laptop to the server and from the server the request is received okay so there's a two process thing that happens requesting and receiving request and getting a response from the server so this is the overall called api but again we have to know lot of things around this so let's get on to our next topic right so here is the response i have got where i see the facebook page now let us understand it in more detail so you are using something called the url which stands for uniform resource locator right when you type www.facebook.com or google.com whatever you type you are using a uniform resource locator which is which we in short we call it as a url so what happens is this because i am typing this url a request has been sent to the server and from the server a response is received and finally i see a output on my laptop i see the url whatever i have requested for uh, that appears on my laptop and everything happens through the api now to understand in little deeper having little more deeper concept let's go through this little bit of demonstration what happens so on my laptop i opened a browser you could use any browser for example google chrome uh, edge or mozilla firefox right or safari anything you like so the moment i use a browser and i'm going to type a url so in this example i'm going to type www.facebook.com the moment i type what happens this browser is going to convert the url to http request so what is url url means uniform resource locator right uniform resource locator and now from here this browser is going to convert this uniform resource locator this address right this address will be converted to a http request so you have seen when you are typing there is a https request right so what this browser will do this is going to convert this address to a http request 
and what is this http http request it stands for hyper text transfer protocol right it transfer the data hyper text transfer the transfer protocol now this http request contains two different things one is the header the other other one is the body so what is this header the header actually contains the url that you have typed right www.facebook.com and there is a verb that means i would like to get something from facebook the moment i type facebook it should go to the server and should show me the facebook page right so it will have the header so this is called the header which includes the url and a verb dot get in this example now there will be also a body the body could be empty when i am typing www.facebook.com the body will be empty let's imagine on the facebook page you have already opened on your laptop and there are two different things it is asking hey enter the username and password then this body will have the username and password and carry these data to the server getting it how it is working so first i have opened facebook now the browser has converted the data to http request and this http request contains two different things one is the header right which has the url and a dot get verb it is called verb i mean the work of it is to get the data so it is saying dot get so get it from the server that means so and then the body will have the username and password with all this data this http request http request will go to the server and hit the server now from the server what happens till now what we have done the user has, has typed a url and the request has been sent and this request is called http request make a note this entire process that you saw this is part of the api the very first part of the api is to ensure whatever the url is typed that has been converted to http and what exactly required i want to get the data from the server so dot get and then it goes to the server and from there from the server it will do the re, re, next part what is the next part it should get a response from the server so there are two things involved one is called http request the other one is called http response getting it so one way i am sending a request to the server and the other way i am getting a response from the server so what would happen when i am getting response likewise you have seen when i am sending a http request it getting converted to the url getting converted to http request and containing header and body right important part of the http request same way when i am getting a response these are the two things that we i will get from the server status and the body so the body will contain the html page for example facebook page status will contain let's say 200 that means the page is able to you know was able to retrieve from the server i mean there is no error right there is no error so the status will come with a this is a status code 200 means it's okay so it is going to get the data from the server and from the server it will send it to your laptop and your laptop is going to receive the page facebook.com so you got it right how things are working let me go back and show you once again how things are working so what we did first we went to the browser on my laptop right we went to the browser on my laptop and then on the browser i have typed facebook.com and from facebook.com what happens the browser will convert that to a http request and the http request will have two different things header and the body the header will have again two different things the url and the verb what exactly it like to do get so it wants to get the data from the server and the body will be either it will be empty or it could have some data in it it could be some data okay for example username and password and then this data will be sent sent to the server and from the server so right now we have completed the first part of the api work that is the entire there are two different functions one is the http request the other one is the http response so the first part is complete now from the server what this will do this api is going to get the data from the server and then the uh, you know this it will have two different things which is known as http response with the status and the body status means is it able to get the data from the server or not with the you know it will show the code and then it will have the body for example in in our case it is a facebook page so the facebook page will come and it will be sent to your laptop and you will be able to see the page so this thing is clear how the api is working so this entire function is known as the api where it does http request and get a response from the server this much is clear right what exactly and all this will happen in the back end you don't see that it will all happen in the back end right one working at the server one working at the client and you know it it is exchanging the data so initially what i said api means what api means 
which is responsible for data exchange and you can see it is doing the data exchange one data going from the client to the server and data flowing from the server to the client okay so data exchange is happening between these two okay now let's understand how this is done in the in ui path so there is an activity in ui path called http request so let me show you that so wherein you will be have you will have more idea so what you do first you go to manage packages okay hit on the manage packages because by default you will not have that activity and you have to go to official and type uipath.web okay if you type uipath.web this is the activity uipath.web api activities and you need to install it and save it i have already done that so install and save it and after that if you go to your activity panel and type http you will find this activity called http request okay now this http request has got multiple things so i was talking something about get right so here you put the end endpoint url and there's a request method i was talking about get post put delete head there are a lot many things we are going to learn in our next video this is the introductory video wherein you got to know what is a http request and how that works and what is the concept behind that so you got a complete understanding from this slide you know how the http request is sent to the server and how a response we receive and the same things are available here http builder where i am putting the endpoint url so you can't put www.facebook.com i'm going to show you how these things will be configured and used and you will get a response here from the server and you will be able to preview that and this response could come in various different formats it could come in json format it could come in xml format or else you can define your own custom format okay so all these things are uh, is something we are going to see in our next video at the moment i will leave it here just to ensure you know we understood what is the api and how things works you know what is the responsibility of the api and where this api exists right it exists on the client it exists on the server and it is a communication mechanism that's all it's a communication mechanism between the client and the server which does the data exchange between the client and the server it could be even two clients doesn't matter so two different devices exchanging the data with the api which stands for application programming interface okay so with this data i think it should be clear you should as a beginner you should have a great idea now what is an api and what you know the entire cycle of the api you have an understanding so in the next video we are going to understand in detail as to how do i use this http request you know with a demo we are going to see that because there are api you cannot access all the apis there will be apis which are private there are apis which are public so we are going to take some example of the public apis and try to see how that can be implemented on uip studio so that's all guys in this video thank you so much for watching uh, please do subscribe to my channel in case you have not done it please do support me please do subscribe to my channel and hit on the bell icon to stay up to date thank you guys we are going to meet once again in our next video take care bye bye